Chapter 7, we talked about this idea of compound interest. And we had this compound interest formula that was A equals your principal times 1 plus R over N to the N times T power. So this is for where R represented your rate. N was the number of compounding. So if it was compounding quarterly or compounding daily, that's what N was. So if it was compounding daily, we'd use 365 for N. And T represents your time. Well, today we're going to talk about this idea of what if we have a situation that it compounds continuously? Before we get to that, we need to understand this uh, value for E that we're going to talk about today. E is similar to pi, as in pi we represent as a symbol representing the number 3.14159. E represents the number 2.718. Two eight. And this button you'll find on any calculator, either a scientific calculator or even the CAS calculator that you guys may have. Um, on the CAS calculator, you'd type in e to the first power to get this. And if you hit enter, you'd get 2.71828. But here's how we use this. Uh, the, uh, if we have a situation where we're going to look at what the value would be if it was compounding continuously, we would use this formula. I just referred to it as PERT. It's P times E, and our exponent is going to be R times T. And this exponent, if you want to put this E in parentheses, it only, the exponent only applies to the E. So we would apply the exponent to E first, and then take that value times pi. But it's easy to remember just by this phrase PERT. So let's look at a situation we'll be using that. It says, Talia invested. $3,927.54 in a zero coupon bond, paying 5.5% compounded semi annually. After 30 years, the value of the bond will be $20,000. How much would Talia's investment have been worth after 30 years if interest were compounded continuously instead of twice a year? Well, our principal is the original amount here. And then our value for E is going to be a number. Our rate is going to be 5.5%, which has a decimal is 0 0.055. And our time, in this case, is going to be 30 years. So again, if it had been compounded semi-annually, after 30 years, it would be approximately $20,000. We want to see, well, what would the difference be if it was compounded continuously? Well, we would take the amount would be your principal. times E. Remember, E is not a variable. E is a number. And then your exponent's going to be your rate, which is 0 0.055 times the time, which is 30. And we would just type this in on our calculator as we see it. And when you do that, you get $20,450 and... I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It's $20,450.62. There we go. Would be your answer. Now a note about typing this in on your calculator. Sometimes scientific calculators, people have problems with those, so you want to make sure that when you do that, that you put this in parentheses just to make sure that the calculator will figure this out properly. So it would be e to the 0 .055 times 30, and then take that value, whatever that answer is, times $3,927.54. But again, if you have a scientific calculator, it's a little trickier on a cast. The nice thing is, is you can see exactly what's happening when you use that exponent button. To make sure you guys know how to do this and can use your calculators properly, why don't you guys try this next one on your own. It says Mona invested $8,218.16 in a zero coupon bond, paying 4.5% compounded semi-annually. After 25 years, the value of the bond will be about $25,000. Actually, let's stop there for a second. We forgot to talk about that. Uh, with this one here, you can see that when it was compounded semi-annually, it was about $20,000 after 30 years. Compounding it continuously, meaning that it never stops compounding, that interest is broken up in infinitely is basically what's going on. Uh, $450 is basically the only difference there between compounding twice a year versus compounding t continuously. So the whole purpose of this PERT is it's a little bit easier of a formula to remember, 
And it still gives us a good approximation of what that value would be after a certain amount of time. So that's what we're doing here. So with this next one, again, why don't you guys try this one on your own. So hit pause and, or so pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so again, we're using this formula, PERT. What am I doing? There we go. So we're using this formula, PERT. So it's the total amount is going to equal your principal times E to the R times T as an exponent. So in this case, your principal is $8,218.16 times E. Your exponent is going to be 0 0.045 times 25. When you do that in your calculator, what you should have gotten was approximately $25,000. So $25,313.71. So in other words, if they give you a number like this that we're comparing it to, your answer should be pretty close to it. So here, compounding continuously for 25 years is only a $300 difference. Let's look at one last example or type of example. Here it says a capacitor is an electrical device capable of storing an electric charge and releasing that charge very quickly. For example, a camera uses a capacitor to provide the energy needed to operate an electronic flash. The percent Q of, chain of charge in the capacitor T seconds after flash begins is given by this formula, where P is the initial percent of the charge of the capacitor. If 44.8% of the charge is left 0 0.08 seconds after the flash begins, to what percent was the capacitor originally charged? So Q, in this case, is going to be the 0.448. Because Q represents the percent of charge in the capacitor after a certain amount of time after the flash begins. So if there's 44.8% left after 0 0.08 seconds, that tells me that the 44.8% or 0.448 is my value for Q. So it's going to be equal to so in this case here, we're trying to find the initial amount. What was it when it was originally charged? So if you notice, this, sim this form is also similar to the um, formula we've been talking about ever since the beginning of this chapter, A times B to the X power, where A is your initial amount and B is your growth factor. So in these problems, that value for E is your growth factor. For this particular problem, P represents the initial percent, so the initial amount. So that's what we're trying to find. So our formula is going to be negative 10.0055 times t. t in this case is 0 0.08 seconds. So now what I want to do to solve this problem, remember e is a number, it's not a variable. So this piece that I just boxed in purple there, that represents a number. So I'm going to type that in my calculator, e to the negative 10.0055 10 times 0 0.08. When I do that, I get point, write it like this, 0.449 is my answer. So I have p times 0.449. So again, I'm trying to figure out that initial percent. So to find that initial percent, I'm going to divide both sides by 0.449. So here I get my initial percent of 0.998, which again, as a percent, we would write this as 99.8% when it was originally charged. So in other words, it wasn't fully charged when we took the uh, picture. It was only 99.8%, so almost completely charged up. Here's a similar type problem. Why don't you guys work this one out? It says the amount L of a certain radioactive substance remaining after T years is given by this formula, where B is the initial amount of radioactive substance. If 2,000 grams are left after 6,000 years, how many grams were present initially? So in other words, we're trying to figure out what B is. So go ahead and put in this information in the equation and solve it. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. Okay, you should have set it up like this.
And again, that part there represents a number, so you do that on your calculator first, which gives us approximately 0.54881, we'll say. When you divide both sides by 0.54881, Uh, we're going to get as our answer for B, uh, we'll get approximately, we'll round this, whoops, to 3,644 grams. So initially there would have been 3,644 grams, and that's your answer. So again, in today's lesson, the key thing is to understand that if we, they talk about something being compounded continuously, we use PERT, where R and T are your exponents. And if you have a situation like this where they give us a total amount, and we're trying to figure out what our initial value is, remember to take care of the E portion. So simplify that part first. And then divide both sides by that value to find out what your initial amount is. But otherwise, with that, you should be able to do pretty well on your assignment. So good luck.